Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next Boruto anime review. This one is going to be for episode 255, which is the final episode of this uh, arc in The Village Hidden in the Mist. Um, it's been a long time coming. This has been a very, very long arc, um, and it definitely, I don't think, has justified having so many episodes. That's probably the main takeaway that I have from this. It's probably the main complaint about a lot of the uh, non-manga material arcs in both Naruto and Boruto. Um, there's often some very good content in here, individually good scenes, good ideas. You didn't need 20 plus episodes for these ideas. Now, I don't think it's, it's this is a case where it's as extreme, where like we need to cut this down by like half. I think this is more of a situation where you could easily trim off, say, I'd say four or five episodes from this and you have a very complete, um, obviously there's a few other things you, you need to improve as well, but you have a much more nicer flowing and complete feeling, you know, 20, 19, 18 episode arc. And that would just work out that little bit nicer in my opinion. Because this episode as the epilogue, I actually think did a very good job. Obviously, there's issues with, say, like the previous episode, how they wrapped up a lot of these things, how they just completely threw Amari to the side. Um, but I think they did some good stuff in this episode to sort of, in a way, help answer that. So straight away with the Amari idea is that I think everyone leaned on the idea that, oh, Kawaki has just like assassinated Amari. He's like slid his throat and he's gone. And... There's a weird factor there because it feels like it is in complete opposition to what Borto is doing. That you then have to say that the conflict was not just averted by uh, Borto sacrificing himself and his, his words, his ideals, getting to people and that stopping the conflict. That's a part of it, but now you have to also say that actually it was also sort of half Kawaki who, who killed Amari and stopped the war from sort of reigniting. Whereas here, it actually makes it more valid to place it more on Boruto because, okay, Kawaki still stopped that from happening, but he still ultimately did it by holding to Boruto's ideals. He didn't kill a person to stop this. Even the guy who you could probably most heavily justify as if there's any one character who it would be okay to kill and still keep the general idea that Borto is correct, it probably is a Mary because he was the one who was so lost in the quest for revenge that there was no talking him down. That I felt 100%, this character's not making out of this alive. Now, I still think it's frustrating that he is just back in prison, right back where we started, and are we setting up that we'll do something with him again down the line? Or is this just how they're wrapping up the character? It's a bit frustrating, but they they commit to the ideal of Borto through Kawaki's actions. And and that complexity of like the characterization in this episode I thought was good. Because it was all about sort of the conflict between Borto and Kawaki. Uh, kind of optimism and uh, naivety basically versus uh, kind of realism and having I suppose a negative view on how conflicts uh work and need to be resolved um but you can point directly to the fact that kawaki didn't kill a maori and the fact that he didn't fully commit to arguing with borto in the opening sequence that he uh, bits and pieces of borto and i suppose naruto's ideals are beginning to rub off on kawaki he is beginning to change to some degree you can sense that, like, he doesn't fully want to necessarily change. He does want to be a character of action. And he's always, I think, going to inherently lean in that direction and not... He's never, I suppose, going to be the one to maybe make the decision of, like, no, we shouldn't fight here. Um, but he can follow other characters who maybe make the, the, the reverse decision. And, and that was, I think, quite good because... You can sort of get the sense where if if the wrong thing happens or if Borto maybe tries to do something like that and it doesn't work, Borto, uh, sorry, any sort of faith in that ideal that Kawaki has will be shattered and it will probably turn him into the character that we have in like the flash forward. 
because I think he mentioned that in this episode the idea of like the whole idea of Shinobi is to kind of resolve conflicts effectively through violence. Um, whereas Boruto proves that that's not the case. So he kind of feels that Shinobi are sort of pointless if this is how all conflicts are going to be. But in the flash forward, he talked about how like the era of the Shinobi is over. So you can sort of see the idea of Kawaki taking down that dark path would become very anti-Shinobi uh, and completely go away from that Naruto and Boruto ideal. And um, so it's, I think, somewhat subtle setup for that, that right now things are going good and he can kind of let himself in a way, quote unquote, lose this argument and not fight it too hard because it did work out and he ultimately went along with that way of thinking. Um, but overall, like, I, I, th I like the way they did it because like you had the scene with, like, say, Naruto and Boruto on top of the Hokage office which I thought was really nicely done, where Naruto, without going into like a full flashback, just references the idea that he's had to make decisions like that before. He has experienced this exact thing. How do you end a cycle of revenge, cycle of hatred, um, when everyone thinks that you are nothing but an idealist trying to do so? That's exactly what Naruto faced in the pain arc. Um, and that's why that arc is so well done. And it's also why I think there, that a lot of people with this arc think there is a lot of potential in what they tried to do. It's just that there was so much messiness around like the motivations of, of the different factions in all of this, the details of it. And it never felt like they fully committed to wanting to do all that much with the characters. So they went for the major kind of thematic point that fits Naruto without really having the substance of the arc there to make it fully land home as much as it sort of needed to but i like this uh, kind of uh, father son bonding moment here of of borto realizing that naruto gets it that naruto doesn't like really scold borto for making such hard harsh action he makes sure not to i suppose super praise him for it either and he kind of just notes that you know um putting yourself at risk like that it, it's going to upset your mother especially but ultimately he is proud i suppose that you know, Boruto very much represents his own ideals as well. So I like that they're beginning to sort of match up uh, on that side of things as well. And Naruto also does say, I think you should patch things up with Kawaki. And that leads us to, uh, there is a quick, I think, Mitsuki and um, Kawaki scene, which is just meant to be the sort of like equivalent to the Naruto Boruto scene, which is just um, Mitsuki pointing out to Kawaki that, um, Kawaki is usually so harsh and never has any problem just speaking his mind regardless of how rude it is. He stopped uh, arguing halfway through because he ultimately agrees and leans in the Borto direction to some extent. So I like that there is that and it sets up that, okay, they're going to argue again. And it looks like that's what's going to happen, but they just start fighting. And it's not a full on, they fire attacks at each other type thing. It's literally just a straight up taijutsu fist fight. And Sarada wants to stop this because she's like, how, how on earth has it come to this? Uh, but I like that Nar Naruto just shows up out of nowhere uh, and is like, let them do it. Mitsuki also is sort of like, yeah, I think this is the way that they need to do this. And I like that it was very much referencing the whole idea. It's the, we mainly saw this with Naruto and Sasuke of uh, sort of the, the communication through their fists in a way that this will, in a way, be much more of a significant argument between the two than it would be them just shouting words at each other. Uh, that this will be how they ultimately settle it. Given that it's one of these things where like no one's inherently right, no one's inherently wrong, they just need to get this emotion and this is the most kind of clear-cut way to do that. They're not trying to kill each other here, um, it's more of just a bit of frustration. And so we get the fight. Now, the no notable thing about this fight, obviously, I think is more on the production side of things. Um, there are glimmers of, oh, they were trying to go for some really nice animation here. But I think you can tell, this is probably one of the episodes most clearly where you can maybe tell that there were production problems with this episode, probably down to time. They probably didn't have enough time to put the fight together in as big of a way as they wanted to. Because I think the setup was all here, that this should have been your sort of... Um, you know, maybe 7.5, 8 out of 10 animation level. But instead, they 
have so many cutaways from the fight to just more or less like still shots of look who's watching the fight it's naruto uh, mitsuki and sarada and they're just standing here with maybe some very minor animation happening there's even a straight up shot to the sky and they hold on it for like four or five seconds which in in animation feels like an eternity where you're not seeing anything move and that's a, I think one of the clearest signs that yeah there, there's some problems here that they were trying to sort of fill in the time for the episode that they needed to and they couldn't do it with the more time consuming complicated uh, fight choreography um, because like I said the, the little moments where you see them fight there was kind of a lot of choreography going on like they had the two of them just like middle of the frame um jumping over attacks but then they they cut away from it after like two three seconds um and i don't think they even in the the sort of weakest sort of filler arcs they never overly tend to do that where if they're having a fight your attention is away from that fight for most of the time it's happening and and they did that here and that's what took away from the fight a little bit but I got the point that they were going for in the end. They both punch each other. They both quote unquote knock each other out. And they're both on the ground. And they realize that you know they've, they've, they've worked through their issues for the most part. Naruto pulls both of them up. And they're like yeah let's go for ramen. And it's like okay. That's what we're doing here. We, we've resolved this uh, as much as we're going to. Um, other notable scenes. We have the scene with uh, Kobuna. And I guess uh, Funamushi's second in command. With what seems to be the idea that the second command guy is more or less kind of like adopted Kabuna and he's going to kind of raise him to be just as important of a person as his father once was. And it does seem like the revenge is for the most part gone. Kabuna <clears throat> just wants to be strong enough to be able to protect people um, but not to take revenge. And that's the significance of I think Kabuna in this arc was... Yes, it was it was fundamentally Borto and Ikada who resolved the conflict, but I think Kabuna was also essential in that as well. And the fact that he couldn't bring himself to take revenge when given the clearest cut opportunity to do so. And when he thought that he even had the slightest hand in killing Borto, it tore him apart. And that was so important to show. So I like here that we see that revenge seems to be completely out of his mind and the other guy who was more like set on revenge also realizes that no the better thing here is to try and raise kabuna in the best way as possible not wanting revenge and that will get you know the person funamushi kind of wanted as his son in a way raised in the in the right way and i thought that worked very nicely just a quick scene but a, a really strong wrap up for kabuna who was actually a very strong minor character even though he wasn't used all that much so i like that um chojuro there's a there's a bunch of scenes with chojuro here that i quite like that showed the growth that he showed in the previous episode of realizing that like he was also at, at, at one point thinking that oh borto you're being too naive uh, in what you're doing but then he sort of realizes that like what was i doing what was i thinking I'm the leader here and I couldn't see the the importance of what Borto was actually trying to do here and we see him do that kind of here as well in that he's he's much more reasonable reflecting on what's going on here of like there are groups of people out there who want the book thrown at the Fanato everyone involved in this in jail that's what that's what they want they bring up a plot point that was completely forgotten about apart from like the first episodes of this arc that the feudal lord's son was killed. I had completely forgotten that that happened because despite like 10 plus episodes setting up the idea of the, the Fanato are going to war against the mist, they never really brought up why either side fundamentally actually is going to war. When it was right there, I just completely forgotten. It really showcased that they, they didn't do a good job at the... Um, motivations of both sides in the conflict but Chodro realizing this and in a way using the the same thing as Borto it's like the only way to end the cycle of hatred is in, is in a way for you to be the one to sort of concede a little bit of ground show that you are willing to make a change yourself and um, and then other people will be willing to do that also so instead of what 
maybe seems the most realistic thing to do. And yeah, put all the notable people in prison. Instead, okay, Amari's going to prison because there's no hope for him. He was in there in the first place. It makes sense. But let's not put Ikada in prison because we sort of know why, what happened with him, why he went down that path. And that it would this would just be this kind of pointless thing where you're basically, in a way, ruining Ikada's life just because of this conflict. And Naruto takes the approach of being way more optimistic um, about these type of things and making some decisions that, that, that don't seem like they make a ton of sense, but are actually grand statements that will lead to way more peace than anything else. Um, and I think that the, the remaining kind of people of the Fanato will see how they handled sort of like the only other leader of the Fanato left, Ikada, and realize that, okay, the mist is trying here. They're going to let Ikada go back to his old life, become a shipbuilder, which is what his dream was. Um, and then the other ground that he concedes is, of course, that they are temporarily stopping like progress on the Shinonomi. They're going to, I think, shut it down and I suppose see how things go. And that straight away is that will stop a lot of the people very angry at the situation. Um, in terms of the Fanato feel like they kind of lost in all of this, but they got part of what they actually wanted. Now, again, I don't think the show did a great job at establishing why they had such a big issue with the Shinonome one, because they never showed what, what it's doing that is, that is affecting their way of life. Uh, outside of, I think, one Mitsuki line of dialogue where he mentions that the Shinonome one is helping some people and maybe putting some people out but that's the balance you need to get he is taking the approach of like i want to get more of like everyone's opinions on things as we move towards progress and if everyone wants a specific path we will do that and he just feels that maybe too many decisions were made without factoring in everyone's opinion and so that that's a that's a good thing to think about as a leader so chodro gets some uh, major props for me for his portrayal in all of this um so that I, I thought that was good and um, ikada going back to the boss was nice it does seem like they're they're full on very much like disconnecting him from the Fanato for the most part because one plot point that seemed like they just didn't want to go into was what is the power of the Fanato clan um what is the whole sea dragon god thing and and like why couldn't he awaken his powers before but he could now um what's the significance of that like what is that power is it just a special water jutsu or is it related to like a summoning animal in some way? I, I don't even know. They didn't go into it in any sort of detail. And because you didn't involve a Maori in fights for the most part, and Ikada also didn't get a fight, the best we saw was just the uh, the full water dragon thing used to save Borto. Which again is, is a nice statement of this. Of The big power we thought was going to be involved in fights is used in a way that showcases like peace. One slide saving the other. Um... So there's that. Bunton and Kyoto. Uh, with Kyoto, very happy with his resolution. Uh, as was set up, he is going to be the protector, the guardian of Kagura's town. And he, he addresses the whole idea that this is a significant place on the path to the mist. It's him accepting a role as a shinobi of the mist again. So that's nice to see that, you know, his involvement in this arc has led to him taking on a role that will be valuable. He learned from Kagura and that's what's happening here. Bunton, I think they did mostly what they needed to do. They just didn't quite do enough right at the end. I wanted a much clearer position for her at the end rather than just, I'm going to the Mist Village and I'm going to be a shinobi. I wanted a clear path of... Uh, what I needed, I think, was her to talk to Chojuro and maybe the suggestion that if this goes well, this sword, my sword, will be yours as it was once Kagura's. I think that's the way they probably kind of should have went with it, just to make her feel a little bit more important in this. Otherwise, I think they hit the points they had to. She also is still concerned about Shizuma, 
but is willing to let that go because that's what Kagura would have wanted. And she also feels that she can be of better use doing something for the mist than she could just pursuing her own revenge. Uh, in that sense, I'm kind of like, yeah, you, you got this like 8 out of 10, right? You just didn't quite, you know, hit the final hurdle type thing. Like, get, get over that final hurdle. Um, but if we ever do come back to this arc, I would be very much looking for Bunton to see what she is up to next and if she is moving more into that position. I think there's a few things they potentially like could have done like that just to just make her arc feel more important because you know there's a reason the, that these were sort of the main significant like minor characters used in this arc and it was to create these positions show their character growth of they tre they truly do want to redeem themselves and they fully commit to it here at the end so very good overall uh, but just slight execution problems right at the end it's like the the definition of this arc in so many ways is just that's exactly it you just didn't quite do it correctly and i think that's most of what i want to talk about with this arc um i'm glad we're we're done with it in a way because it's one of those arcs where i held out hope for so long through it that we'll get the big moments at the end we'll get the big moments at the end and they got like one of them but then didn't give us anything else because like the, this arc feels weird because like we really didn't get many fights like the big fights were more in like the the middle of the arc the the sort of five eighths of the way through the arc and um, and then it was a long setup for a big battle that never actually happened and then we didn't get really any of that stuff i, I think probably the biggest thing in all of this is just that i think we should have had a big fight with amari him showing the full extent of his powers but it being Fanato whole uh, Fanato people who have seen the light and the Leaf Village characters to, to be to be the ones to take him out. That I think would have had the most impact. And again, they don't kill him, but they have to beat him, but they do it together after Borto has sort of uh, averted the crisis effectively. That 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 would have been to me just the ideal way to do it. That way the one thing that I think most people were waiting for from this arc to see that you know, dragon god power thing water dragon power in action properly and we didn't instead the most significant stuff we got was Funamushi, who was like a, a lieutenant kind of character not, not even super super high up he was the one who demonstrated the sort of fancy water style jutsu the most and there's weird things like that i think just throughout the arc that didn't quite come together like i've said many times throughout this the fact that they didn't fully commit to the arc with Borto because he didn't actually kill anyone, even though he was effectively accused of it and effectively like said he was guilty of doing it, even though he didn't. So it was it was weird like that. But next we move into a Chocho episode. So they, they do this quite a lot after like a bit of a frustrating, like a uh, longer arc. Let's change it up with some Chocho. And I'm okay with this for like an episode or two. But I, I hope we get some more significant stuff in episodes coming up. And I'm okay with the next episode being a little slower because we have had a lot of, you know, episodes of the series trying to be as heavy as possible, but maybe not quite succeeding. So a bit more of a fun episode, Chocho, Food, Inojin could be decent. And it looks like there might be some significant stuff because they're going to it looks like play on the idea of now that Shikadai is a Chunin, um, he's not on the same mission as Chocho and Inojin. So they're going to want to prove themselves. Um, it does, though, look like it's a food-related mission with Chojo, so they're they're leaning into that once again. But it should be okay. <laughs> for, an, for a week or two, it should be okay. So there are my thoughts on the episode and the arc. In the comments, let me know what your thoughts were, but that's been it. Thanks for watching and bye.